I don't mean to be alarmist, but something seems off. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where I talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. I will admit I was not planning on making this video today. I was not planning on making any video today and I had a different video that I've already filmed that was going to be released before this one that was sort of my return to YouTube and my energy in that video is completely frenetic so I apologize in advance if you watch that but I wanted to make this video because I, I've been talking to some people on Instagram and then I watched a couple of videos myself and I just had some stuff to say. I wanted to address some stuff and I got the urge to just create a video and share with you what I can. So yeah, I wasn't planning on making this video. I had no thoughts about making this video, but I think that it is relevant and necessary. And what is this video about, you might ask? It is about Chanel quality and Chanel leather, specifically modern 2022 Chanel quality and Chanel leather. And the reason that I'm making this video is it is partially in response to a video that Super Jacob just released. He released a video about his Chanel 22 bag, his brand new Chanel 22 bag, and how after only a few minutes of wear, like 20 minutes of wear, he got some really bad wear and tear. And then he started talking to his friend, Romina Rosemay, who also shared on her channel some quality issues with the Chanel 22 bag. And the reason I, I started down this rabbit hole is because I was approached by my friend Jasleen from The Real Shaquin. You probably know her, she's fantastic. And she approached me because she knows that I have some knowledge about leathers and especially luxury leathers. If you've been on this channel before, and even if you haven't, I do have a little mini series called Let's Talk Leather, which I will link for you the playlist. And in it, I discuss and share information about leathers, but specifically leathers that go into creating luxury goods. A little bit about how the leathers are created, how they're tanned, how they're dyed, what the leathers are, consist of, like where leathers are sourced from. And in making that video, I, I share some knowledge with you, and I'm here to share some more knowledge today, some of which I just kind of discovered when getting ready to film this video today in terms of modern Chanel leather, not even modern Chanel quality and construction, though I do have some points about that, which I will be bringing up in this video, but just the leather and what it looks to be and how it looks to be. I am concerned uh, about some things. Now, I want to start out by saying that in my previous videos about Chanel leather, I stated that Chanel leather is full grain, top quality leather. And it is. Why do I know that? Because I have contacted Chanel about their leathers. Now Chanel is relatively secretive about the materials that go into some of their pieces. They don't just put it on the website, they don't put the make, they don't put where their leathers are sourced from necessarily. But if you have a will, and you go to them and say you'd like to be put in contact with somebody who can give you that information, they will do it. That, that's how I found some information about Chanel leathers and, and what they're made of. I have had it confirmed by Chanel representatives that Chanel leathers, at least when I made my previous video uh, earlier this year or possibly in 2021, I don't remember when it came out, but earlier when I spoke to a Chanel representatives over a period of years that I have been interested in Chanel and luxury goods, I have been told, like actually point blank told, like this is information that was exchanged, that Chanel used full grain leather. That there, there's no way to misconstrue that. I was, I was told this. So that's what I went by. And in terms of that, uh, I have experience with a variety of different leathers. I have knowledge about a variety of different leathers. And so I was able to confirm with pieces that I own that yes, this is true. Chanel does use full grain leather. Now I'm a little bit all over the place. I apologize for that. This is one of my first videos back to YouTube. So I apologize if I'm a little bit rusty. I do have a video in my Let's Talk Leather series that talks specifically about Chanel leather. I compare Chanel caviar and Chanel lambskin leather, modern and vintage and the differences between the two. I will explain a little bit more in this video too, but if you're interested in a more deeper dive about those two things, specifically Chanel, I would recommend checking out that video. Anyway, what is full grain leather? Full grain leather is essentially the purest, rawest form of animal hide with just the hair and fur removed. Then it is tanned, treated, and then you have leather. It is the purest form of best quality leather that you can get. The best 
full grain leathers that you can get are full grain leathers that have been minimally treated and come from an animal that did not have abrasions on their skin, contusions on their skin, scar tissue. So you have a fairly blemish free hide and that means that top quality full grain leather is quite expensive and is often usually used expressly in luxury goods because they're the ones that can pay for it. They, they can be afforded to acquire these top quality, relatively blemish free hides. Now, some of you might know that I am very, very into vintage leather pieces. Vintage luxury is how I got my start in luxury in general. And I have a special love for vintage Chanel. This is a vintage Chanel lambskin piece that is a one series, which dates it between 1989 and 1991. But judging by the serial number, I would date this particular bag at around 1990 possibly 1991, but it's not a 1989 serial number. And there is no question that this bag is full grain leather. It is beautiful, it is buttery, it was treated well, and it is also pretty much blemish free. The only blemishes you have on this are the scratches that came about over the last 30 odd years of, of wear to it. In fact, in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating as best as I can what different leathers look like. And in order to do that, I'm going to be using this. You might recognize this if you already are familiar with my Let's Talk Leather series, but this is my Jeweler's Loop. And let's see if I can have it. Yeah, this is it right side up. So this is my Jeweler's Loop and it flips out. That gives you 10 time magnification. And this is a jeweler's grade loop. I will link the one that I use down in the description bar below if you're interested in looking at your own items under magnification so you can see the granular details. And this is how I observe my leather up close. And one of the ways that I can see the intricacies of each leather hide that goes into these items, magnification. And so in using this, I am able to show you that this lambskin leather piece, this, you know, this vintage Chanel piece has this beautiful sheen to it. It is incredibly smooth, it's incredibly soft. And you'll notice that in the pictures, you can see pores. You can see different variations in the leather itself, pores, but they are blemish free. This is smooth lambskin leather, beautifully treated. and. On, like there's very little wrong with it. I also want to show you something else. This is a vintage coach bag, also from 1989, actually 1990, 1989. This is a 1989 piece. This is a vintage coach court and I've had it for quite some time. I fixed it up myself and hydrated it and rehabbed it. And I do vintage coach rehab as a hobby. I'll link a video of that where I show you the entire process if you're interested in seeing the start to finish about how that goes. But this is a vintage leather piece. It is from Coach and it is full grain leather and it specifies on the bag itself in the Coach Creed that this is a full grain leather piece. And in fact, I can see in the Creed here, Coach bags have like a Creed. I don't know if I'll be able to show you, but there's this like leather patch with writing that states something about the bag. Current modern day Coach the Creed is different, uh, unfortunately, because it does denote some changes in coach quality. But this coach Creed specifically states, this is a coach bag. It is made out of completely natural glove tanned cowhide. The scars, scratches, veins, and wrinkles are natural markings characteristic of full grain leathers. Coach is basically saying that this is a full grain leather piece. And that means that it's going to look like it came from a hide. It's going to have scratches and wrinkles. Is it also beautiful, relatively smooth quality leather? Yes, it is. And here is a up close picture of this leather. And you can see how beautiful it looks up close under magnification, how it also still has pores, but it is still relatively smooth. And in fact, you can see here, you have the vintage lambskin and the vintage coach cowhide how similar they look, even though they're different leathers. The lambskin, in my opinion, does look smoother from the picture, but that's my trained eye. The coach leather looks a little bit patchier, but that's just because the, the wrinkling in lambskin versus cow hide. Cow hide is a tougher leather to begin with because it's from an older animal. Lambskin is a much softer, much more supple uh, hide because it comes from a younger animal. So why did I bring this up? Why am I talking about vintage coach and vintage Chanel leather? Why am I talking about what full grain leather is? What does this have to do with anything? Well, 
Super Jacob's video talks about his brand new Chanel 22 bag that he got in the Métier Da collection. So it just came out. It's a brand new bag. He wore it for 20 minutes and it started experiencing some very strange and very significant wear. And he showed us some pictures that he took under macro where it looks like the bag is peeling. It's not just that it looks like it's been scratched. It looks like there is a gouge or like a layer of leather that was taken off of this bag. And that's very interesting and also very concerning because leather doesn't do that. Leather doesn't peel in the same way that a faux leather piece might peel or a bonded leather piece might peel. Full grain leather cannot peel. It doesn't have the layers to, to do that. It is, it, it's one piece. And in fact, I, I have some pictures for you to, to show you the differences in peeling leather, like what Super Deco has, and what full grain leather looks like when it has like a scratch or gouge taken out of it. So this is Super Jacob's picture, and it looks very strange, uh, especially if it's supposed to be a full leather bag. It is peeling in a way that kind of removes a layer. There are different colors. There doesn't seem to be any fibers from it at, at all. And it just, it's a different modeled color, and it just, it looks very strange. In contrast, I have a not significant but fairly noticeable gouge in my vintage Chanel piece. So I have right here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I'll try. So right here is like this little scrape in the leather, and that is essentially like a gouge that was taken on the leather. It's a deep scratch, and so the leather is weakened there, and it is a slightly different color because the underside is exposed. And so I have a close-up picture of that for you to, to see what it looks like. And you'll notice that it looks like scratched leather, but it's not a different color necessarily. It's just a different texture because the top layer of the leather was scratched off, leaving another layer of leather underneath. So you can see here the two different pictures, Super Jacob's picture where there's, it looks almost like someone peeled off a layer of something versus my bag, which is a noticeable scrape, but it's kind of like when your skin gets scratched, it like you get a scrape and the, the color slightly changes because the texture has also slightly changed, but that's, that's, they're not the same thing at all. I also want to show you some natural wear and tear that comes from genuine full grain leather pieces over time. So this is my vintage coach bag again, and this is one of the corners. You can see that the leather has kind of worn away and you're seeing like some soft fibers because the top part of the leather has worn off and you've got this softer part underneath. Almost suede-like, which that's what suede is. Suede is the underside of a split leather piece. So, you know, that's kind of what is starting to be exposed. The fibrous elements of skin, really. So I have a picture for you here where I show you the up close look at that wear from the bag versus again, Super Jacob's picture where he has wear. You can see they're not similar at all. The, the leather looks very noticeably different. And I also want to point out the sheen of Super Jacob's piece. Super Jacob's 22 bag is a bright fuchsia color. It is very modern. It's very current. I think he got it in, in June. And it is a bright, beautiful fuchsia that has like a sheen to it, a very shiny, almost coating as it were. And it looks a little bit like the coating has peeled off or the material itself has peeled off. Now, as I stated, leather doesn't peel. It scratches it wears, like it, it gets, you know, the soft fibers poking through or exposing, but it doesn't peel in the way that a plastic or a faux leather item does. But there are two ways that an item that is leather might ex exhibit this type of wear. One is if the leather has been painted and the painting coating is peeling off. That might be an explanation as to why it is looking different and why there are different parts exposed. Or it might be bonded leather. I'm going to explain both of those things, so don't worry, but this is going to be a long video. I hope you don't mind an informative piece about a lot of different stuff. Now, why would you paint a piece of leather, especially a Chanel piece of leather, which is supposed to be some of the highest quality craftsmanship, everything that you can get. Chanel is up there in the upper luxury echelon. Chanel, Hermes, they're, they're all up there in terms of craftsmanship and quality. 
Well, there are three different ways that you can color leather. There's aniline or vegetal dyeing, there's dyeing from wet white tanning, and there's painting. And obviously painting is just what it sounds like. It's you're taking leather and you're laying down a coat of paint on top that you are then treating to seal in the color and hopefully lock it. And that's that. Painting leather to color it is a process that results in a leather piece that will have the lowest longevity. So the color is not going to wear as well and it's most likely not going to wear as long if it's painted. And you can actually see this a lot in older Chanel pieces like metallic or iridescent Chanel pieces where the metallic finish is wearing away. That's because it was a painted item and the metallic coating is just wearing off and that's, that's that. You can't really fix it or you can mask it, but that's that's that. It's painted and that's it. So it, it's possible that Super Jacob's bag is, is painted. The other two ways that you can color leather and the way that I was told that Chanel colors its leathers is aniline tanning or wet white tanning that it is then dyed. Aniline dyeing is a natural process where the leather is soaked in tubs of aniline dye and the dye is a semi-translucent liquid that permeates the entirety of the leather and dyes it a different color. It is normally done to darken leather pieces. So this bag was aniline dyed, or I was at least told that it was. Vintage leather bags from Chanel were aniline dyed, as was this bag. These were both aniline dyed pieces and that means that the leather itself, the hide, was soaked in a vat for a period of time that had the color of the leather permeate it completely to dye it usually a darker color. It's a beautiful method. It is pretty sustainable. It's relatively good for the environment or rather it's the best type of dyeing process for the environment in general and it is a very time-consuming and expensive process so it is not done for most leathers. In fact, I believe only 10% of all leathers in the world are vegetable tanned and aniline dyed. The third method, so we have painted, we have aniline, and then the third method is wet white tanning. Wet white tanning is a relatively new process. It's fairly innovative. It's, it's a new system that was created to try to avoid chrome tanning, which is a very short, fast, detrimental to the environment and hazardous process. So wet white tanning was kind of like a, a compromise between vegetable tanning and chrome tanning. Wet white tanning is a mixture of natural and synthetic tannins and will result in a much lighter or white, wet white tanning, much lighter leather that can then be dyed a variety of colors like bright pinks, like pastel blues. Wet white tanning is a process that allows you to essentially bleach the leather before you can then dye it. So it's a way to avoid having to paint on top of leather. You just have a bleached or, or white piece of leather that you can dye any sort of color. And I suspect, I don't have confirmation about this. This is just my conclusion based on what I know about how leathers are created. I suspect that some of Chanel's modern pieces, especially their brighter colors and their lighter colors, are wet white tanned and then dyed. However, as I said, Super Jacob's bag looks very odd and you wouldn't get this kind of wear from a wet white tanned bag because there's nothing to lift away. The color is part of the bag and yet it looks like just that happened. Something was lifted away. Now before I talk about my final and unfortunate thought about current modern day Chanel leathers. I wanted to draw your attention to this bag. This is my Chanel mini reissue. It is from 22P, uh, the spring summer, the 2022 spring summer. So this is a relatively modern piece. It just came out this year. I bought this earlier in the year. It's beautiful. I really love it a lot. But I did, and I noticed this in the store, and I chose to purchase it anyway because I loved the bag. But there are things that are wrong with it and there are things that are wrong specifically with the construction of it and also what I suspect was the process that was used to color the bag. And this is really disheartening because do I love this bag? Yes. And I enjoy it. I enjoy wearing it. But the make of it is definitely not as good quality, not as good craftsmanship as older bags were. And in comparison I have for you a 225 reissue that was from 2005. This is the first reissue line that was made in 2005. It's actually an anniversary edition and so I can compare the make of these two bags and have definitive proof that this bag is 
not as well made. And I mean on the, the basic level of just construction. And I'm going to show this to you now. So this bag is again beautiful. It is this light pink color. However, the stitches, especially on the side of the bag, and I'm gonna show you some close-ups so you can see what I mean. The stitches on the side of the bag are too tight. They pull the leather taut in a way that is concerning because it looks a little bit like the leather is ripping. And I worry that over time it will continue to pull because the tension will continue to be there, especially as the bag is worn. And I have concerns that this might rip the leather. So as you can see from my up close picture, you're seeing the, the holes of the stitches being pulled tight, very tight. And you also can see some white being exposed. Now, why would a pink bag be showing white underneath it? Two options. It was painted pink. This is a pink layer of paint on top of a lighter hide, or possibly it was wet white tan, so the leather was tanned white, and then the dye used did not completely permeate the leather, so it was a much cheaper, faster dye that was also less effective. And both of those are not great conclusions to come to. It, this is a very expensive item. All of Chanel's pieces are very expensive and you're supposed to be paying not just for the brand, but you're also supposed to be paying for the craftsmanship, the quality of the items, the people who make it. Obviously you're paying a lot for the name specifically, but name regardless, I expect, anybody expects quality and good craftsmanship and good materials. And this, these, these issues, they're not defects. Well, the, I think the, the tightness wasn't defects, but I saw two of these bags and both of them had this issue. And some of the other items that I saw in store recently also kind of had the same types of issues where they were just pulled too tight. They were sewn too tight, which makes no sense. It would damage the leather over time. Even fast, it would damage the leather. So I don't love this. And if you can see, I have a comparison with my 225 from 2005. And you can see here that they both have the same stitches around the side. Obviously they're relatively the same bag, just different sizes, and one is a flap. But you can see that with my reissue mini, it was how tight the stitches are versus the 225, that the stitches seem fine. And you can also see that there was no exposed color on the 225, which makes me believe that it was possibly aniline dyed, so it was permeated completely through, or if it was wet white, tanned, then the dye used after was also able to permeate the leather completely through. There's no white showing underneath, which means that the, the dye was able to completely permeate the leather. How many times can I say permeate? Let's, let's not keep count. In contrast, the, the pink bag, you're seeing exposed white parts, incomplete dyeing, essentially. And the same thing possibly on Super Jacob's bag, if you have it being painted, you're having the paint peel off and you're exposing the lesser quality leather underneath. That is a possibility. Now, I did say that this bag was very, very new. This is a 2022 release. And so this bag is the most modern Chanel you possibly can get. So how long has Chanel potentially been having these sorts of quality issues, not even just the construction, but with the actual tanning and dyeing of the leather. Now this bag is a 21P seasonal bag that I bought last year and I love it. It is this beautiful navy bag with this edge stitching. And I think it's very classic looking without being necessarily a classic flap like look alike. It also has just a single flap, which I greatly appreciate. And it can be crossbody, which is just really nice. I have an entire video about this bag if you're interested. It was seasonal, so I don't think you can get it anymore except for on the pre-love market. But if you're interested in the details, I'll link that video for you. I'll also link the unboxing because it was a delightful one in my opinion. But this bag doesn't have the same quality issues that my reissue does. I took some up close pictures of my 21 P Suite Classic as well. And you can see that they both have the same sort of stitching, but the Suite Classic doesn't have the pulling that the reissue does. And it doesn't have any exposed underlying white color like the reissue does. 
it seems to be just overall a better made bag with better quality materials that it just seemed that's just what it looks like especially to my eye which i would like to think is fairly informed so all this was a little bit of an overview just to impart some knowledge to you about what chanel leather used to be you know back in the 90s or 80s even then what chanel still was in in 2005 even in 2021, I think that 2021 Chanel, at least from what I know, from what I've observed in my own items, was still fairly good quality. However, 2022 Chanel seems to be different. Now, I will be honest, I don't own any other 2022 Chanel bags. I just bought my pink reissue this year. I don't have any other bags. I've been to the boutique, but I don't go to the boutique with my jeweler's loop and like observe everything underneath it. So all I can tell you is stuff that I've observed from other people sharing what they have experienced or like Super Jacob making a video and showing his pictures. And based on Super Jacob's picture, of his Chanel 22 bag, especially the wear. Now, again, I haven't touched his bag. I haven't touched any Chanel 22. I've never tried one on, so I couldn't tell you for sure. A lot of how I start to learn about a bag is by touch, because I have, at this point, very sensitive fingers, which sounds weird to say, but it's true. So I haven't touched a Chanel 22. However, based on the images that Super Jacob shared about the wear of the bag, it looks very similar to wear and tear that happens on bonded leather pieces. What is bonded leather? Bonded leather is the closest you can get to faux leather without it being entirely fake. To further explain, bonded leather is a mix of real and fake leather. It is usually made from leftover scraps and fibers from processing genuine leather pieces and then combined with a polyurethane binder to create a plasticized leather good item that can be considered leather because it does contain leather but is not anywhere close to real full leather because it is primarily plasticized. Calling bonded leather leather is actually illegal in certain countries because it is considered false advertising because bonded leather is not actual leather. It is pieces and scraps of leather that have been plasticized to make like a leather soup that then hardens into a leather type item that has some characteristics of leather but will not wear like real leather does, will not last like real leather does, will not feel or smell like real leather does. You can scent or perfume bonded leather so it smells like real leather but that will fade over time especially if you get it really cold that's a tip you take something that is bonded leather or fake leather and get it really cold for a while the scent will dissipate it's another way that you can remove scents from bags that have like cigarette smell or cigarette odor you just put them in a freezer for a while <laughs> or like in your garage for a few days that can help dissipate uh scents i made a very old video about it a long time ago it's not a great video but if you're interested in helping to dissipate smell i will link that video for you i digress bonded leather isn't leather and it does peel because it is just scraps of leather that are smooshed together with a plastic binder to make it like it's like plywood you know plywood is technically wood but it's just pieces of wood that are smooshed together to make this really faux wood spongy material that you can kind of consider wood if you need to break something you know it's temporary it's not made to last it's not made of quality materials it's not usually made in a place that creates quality items in general and bonded leather is basically that, just with leather instead of wood. It is fake, uh, or rather, it is as close to faux leather as you can get without it being entirely fake leather. It's not good, it's not good quality, it, it's, it, it's just, it's, it's plastic. It is plastic with a hint of leather in it, and you can tell that I'm getting a little incensed because I just don't like the idea of it. We've got so much plastic in the world already, we don't need more, and the idea the, the idea that Chanel, a brand with decades of history behind it, lauds itself on its craftsmanship and its quality and is incredibly, incredibly expensive. The idea that Chanel might, might, I don't know for sure. I haven't myself touched these items. I haven't observed them under magnification myself. I haven't observed the damage myself under magnification. So the word is might. I'm not making any accusations. But the idea that Chanel might be using bonded leathers for some of their items is infuriating. I 
like my pieces. I have collected a number of them over the years. People buy them to celebrate things for accomplishments. They've worked very hard and or they've aspired to own a Chanel piece. And so the very idea that a company like this, especially one that is so expensive, might be using such inferior quality pieces is just horrid. <laughs> it's just, it's really, really bad. It's really, really bad. And I am specifically talking about 2022 because even in 2021, again, my, my 2021 bag, I have no issues with this. This was good quality in my opinion. Under a microscope, it looks great. Like I think this is a good bag. It's, it's durable. It's lasted me well. I, you know, that's great. 2021, no problems. But 2022, I've seen a lot of issues. I've seen a lot of crooked flaps. I've seen a lot of misaligned pockets. I've seen a lot of pop stitches, just not even on YouTube and social media, but when I myself go to the Chanel boutique, I see items with quality issues. I had my pick of two of these pink reissues, and I picked this one because I liked the quilting better and also because the flap wasn't misaligned. I tried on a Chanel mini square in black in the boutique in 2022, a few months ago, and this, the flap was off. It was misaligned. And it wasn't an issue of storage because sometimes if you store a bag improperly, you can misalign the flap yourself. It was the, the flap was sewn wrong. <laughs> Again, I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. I don't own a 22 bag. I haven't touched a 22 bag. I only have ever owned my reissue from 2022. Okay, this is the only Chanel bag from 2022 that I possess. So I cannot blanket statement that all Chanel 2022 bags are of differing quality than their previous pieces, but there is a lot of evidence on YouTube, on Instagram, that people have been having quality issues and I don't mean quality issues like construction issues, because those are two different things. If a bag has stitches that are too tight, that's a construction issue. If the bag is made of poor quality materials, that's a quality issue. I've seen both, but I'm not even talking about construction at this point. I'm talking about the leather in which the bag was created. If there's a problem with that, then there's a lot more issues with Chanel as a brand and where it is headed than I think we were even capable of considering. Because I will be honest, I didn't put this under a jeweler's loop when I first bought it home. Did the leather feel a little bit thinner than I was expecting it to? Yes. Did the stitches kind of bother me? Yes. Did I still buy it? Yes. I, I bought this. You know, I, I willingly paid money for this. But the difference between these two bags is significant to, to me, at least, with my knowledge of leathers, with my knowledge of craftsmanship. The difference is, is stark, but also the leathers are different. I took pictures again for you about the up close of the leathers themselves. So the, the mini versus the 225. And it, I, I don't know how obvious it will be on camera. It was a little bit more obvious in person, but the 225, the, the black bag, the leather looks more robust and it looks thicker. Even under just even under just the magnification, it just looks thicker to me. It looks it looks better. It looks like better leather, and feeling it, it also feels less. I don't I won't want to use the word flimsy, but I kind of mean that. Like the leather feels more substantial than the the pink bag does. And I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but it does seem, as I said, like a 2022 change. The my 21 P Sweet Classic doesn't have that issue. It seems like this is relatively recent. Do I think that quality issues have been happening for more than just one year? Yes, I've, I've seen quality issues from 2021, from 2020, like for a while, yes, you see quality issues, but that's construction quality. I haven't seen material issues to this extent until now, until Super Deca made this video, until Jasleen brought those things to my attention. So I do think that this is a relatively recent change. I don't know. I don't even know if any change has been made. I am just one person on the internet stating one thing with like a magnifying glass. Like, I, I don't know for sure, but that's what it seems to me. That's what it seems to me in my area of knowledge. I don't want to say expertise. I'm not an expert by any means. But I do know something. I do know some stuff. I've been studying this stuff for years. You know, I, I know a little bit. I know a little bit. And 
I'm concerned. I am concerned. I would love to hear what you think. If you've experienced any quality issues or construction craftsmanship issues from your modern day Chanel pieces, I'd love to hear about it. I would love to further this discussion. I would be happy to make a follow-up video. And if anybody else who sees this video, who has a YouTube channel, wants to make their own video about it or comments on my information or if anybody wants to talk to me on Instagram or just like I, this is something that I'd like to discuss. This is something I'd like to talk about. And I think it is very worthwhile talking about because there's still people who are interested in Chanel. There are still people who are buying Chanel. I mean, I, I am, I bought Chanel, you know, and I don't know where this, what this means for the direction that the brand is taking in terms of the, the bare materials that they're making their things out of. I have some very mixed thoughts, as you can tell, and this video might be a mess. I'm going to edit it as best as I can. I hope that I've properly covered the topics that I wanted to. I apologize if I haven't. If you want, again, any more clarification or more information, I'd be happy to make a follow-up video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave any questions for me in the comments. Again, if you want to make your own video or you've noticed something, please feel free to do so. Like, let's just talk about it. Let's just talk about it. It's, I think it's worth talking about. And that is the end of what is probably a very rambly video, but I hope that it was informative in some capacity. I hope that it was interesting. I don't mean to be alarmist. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I don't mean to just be like, everybody run out and like, be mad about these things, but it does, it, again, it's, it's something I think is worth discussing. And uh, that's, that's, that's just what I want to say. That's just what I wanted to say and what I came on here to say impromptu in a very spur of the moment video. And now I have to edit it. So I hope, I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, I think that's all I got. So if you liked this video, please do give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Well, this bag is a seasonal from 21. Of course.